The next lab is just a little more complicated than the one we just did. Okay, no, it's not this complicated, but this circuit here, a rather complicated circuit, shows you something useful. It was built on something called a breadboard. See that white thing on the bottom that all the components are shoved into? It's got a bunch of square holes in it. We're going to use one of those in our next circuit, and you need to know how all those little square holes are connected to each other. Um, so here is one without any goodies on it, and here's one I blew up and drew some circles on. Um, this shows you what is connected to what else. That is, um, all along here, all the way across here, all of those behind those holes, there's a piece of metal runs that way. So if I connect something in one of these holes, it's going to be connected to all the others. It's going to be connected to something I stick in one of these other holes. So let's say I put the positive side of the battery, just ran a wire, that red wire from the connector, and put it in there. Then I've got plus five, plus nine volts from the nine volt battery in any of these holes. By the same token, all of these are connected together, but not connected to each other. And so I could run the negative side of the battery in there. Um, I know that red is positive, but that doesn't matter in this case. So anywhere along here, I've got the negative side of the battery, zero volts, and anywhere on this row, I've got plus nine volts. Now, there's a, down at the bottom, there's another section that looks just like it. There's two sections in the middle that are, like, that are similar to each other, except the holes run up and down. So these are all connected, and those are all connected. They're not connected to each other, but they're connected like that. And the same thing over here. These are not connected to that, but they're connected to each of the five others, which means here's a circuit I could build. Um, I could say if this is positive and negative, I could come out on the positive side with a resistor and then plug it in, say, that hole. And then out of that hole, I could just use one of those little jumper wires that you saw me filling with the other day and come out of here. I, my little amp meter that has the alligator clips that we were using, I could just plug the alligator clip into there and then out of the other alligator clip into the negative side of the battery. And there, plus side of the battery, resistor, wire, amp meter, and out, there is a perfectly good circuit. So uh, just so that you can see, um, this is that same picture again. And gosh, what do we have here? We have, we have some kind of complicated CPU there. But look, there's resistors there and there. There's a capacitor. We're going to be working with capacitors. Uh, that's capacitor two, I think, um, on uh, the, the lab we're about to do. And these are those little jumper wires. So this guy needed that hole connected to this, which then is connected to that, and on it goes. So that should give you a good feel for that. Now, that said, let me show you the actual lab setup. The wiring is fairly simple. Um, it is right here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Not that much. When you get in, I'm going to have the battery already connected to these. The battery leads tend to fall out, so I put them in there and put a piece of tape on them. But you can see, we come. I've got a resistor plugged into the positive side of the battery. You will have just one resistor this time. It's going to come out, and you can see, I guess you can see, I've got it jammed into that hole, and then there connected to it, I've got this capacitor. You're going to have three different capacitors. You're going to use them one at a time. They're going to have different values. And we're going to hook it up so that it charges the capacitor. Um, that takes some time, and uh, we've discussed before, as you start sho shoving those electrons onto that metal plate inside a capacitor that's separated from the other metal plate, it takes a while for the electrons to, to all jam up in there, so we can use it for timing circuits. So we're going to time how long it takes for the capacitor to get charged for different values of capacitance. Um, and by the way, capacitors have a plus and a minus sign. If you hook them up backwards, I've got to buy a new capacitor, so please don't. And I'll, I'll explain that to you Monday when you have them in your hand. Anyway, so here's the capacitor hooked in, and then I come out of the other side of the capacitor. I have one of these little jumper wires, and that's the whole circuit. I want to plug it into the negative side of the battery, and when I do, that will complete the circuit. But first, you're going to have some kind of meter. Now, I've got my, my fancy one here, and I've got a couple of these, but I, I have a couple others not quite as fancy, and then I have some like you were using, and I, I'll, they'll just be distributed around, but you'll have some measure, some way of measuring voltage. I am going to hook this meter up to the two sides of the capacitor, 
and get all that done before I hook this up. As soon as I complete this circuit, electrons are going to start assembling in there, and that means there's going to be a potential difference, a voltage across these. So watch the display and go. And you can see there it's already to one volt. There's the two volts. So it starts charging up immediately. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, get a stopwatch and we're going to measure how long it takes for that to for it to become fully charged. And we're going to record all that and do some graphs and make some conclusions from that. So um, should be a fun lab. You now know everything there is to know uh, to be prepared. Um, if you need to go back and review how those lines are connected on the circuit board because there won't be time to redo that. Thanks and see you tomorrow.